So a few weeks ago, we made kombucha with Lucy here at Black Sheep. Uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. A few weeks ago we made kombucha here at Black Sheep with Lucy, um, but when we went home to get started on our own, we realized that having a video on actually a step-by-step -step tutorial would be really helpful. So we came back and now we're here making that. So Lucy, what is the first step when you want to make kombucha at home? Um, so I'd say the first step is to obviously make sure that you have your SCOBY. Um, so this is your little SCOBY here. Um, and you see that it's like, uh, it's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Um, so they build up in these really, really thin layers, like brew by brew. You can see that's how thin they are, like each time. And then that was going to build up into like a nice pancakey jellyfish kind of thing. Weird. Yeah, super weird. And you can see the dark speckles in it. Those are that's yeast. So that's good. That's fine and healthy. Um, they can be really, really ugly. That doesn't matter. Like this. One. <laughs> yeah, this was. But that looks kind oh, of but pretty. That was pretty. Yeah. And then you just turn it over, and it's like. Wah. Um, <laughs> nope. So make sure that you have one of those, and then it's all nice and healthy. Get off. Um, and then you're going to want to get some tea, which is going to be basically black tea. Um, this is an organic Darjeeling, um, and then you can use oolong as well, which is... That's green tea, right? No, yeah. oolong I think is still black tea, but it's oh. been smoked. So it's just like a process that happens to it after it's been picked. So we can have a look. Yeah. And you'll see that like you can use anything from like you can just see how these are like little rolled pebbles mm -hmm. and that these are like the long little branchy things. Um, it doesn't really matter so long as it comes from like the tea family. Um, so it's not um, um, like rooibos or mata. Like they're not actually tea. Like not like herbal teas. Yeah, right? it can't. Yeah, it also can't be herbal teas. Like obviously, like mint or something like that. Yeah. It has to come from like the tea plant, yeah. which is all the all the different like green teas, all the different black teas. There's like actually hundreds and hundreds once you get into it, um, and that it doesn't have any oils added to it. So like Earl Grey has bergamot oh. added, um, and I think that's a big problem with fruit teas as well. That a lot of them have like natural flavorings added too. Okay. Um, so try and steer clear of those. Um, but this is good, like I mean straight up like black tea is pretty cheap and you can normally get it in biggish bags. Um, so and you need tea, your tea, SCOBY. Your SCOBY, your starter tea. So starter tea is um, um, already brewed kombucha and we call it starter tea and you always want to have um, a, probably about a third of your brew wants to be starter tea, i.e. Uh -huh. old kombucha. To like help it get going. Yeah to, because um, this is nice and acidic. When it's finished its cycle, when the kombucha is like nice and tangy and sour and has a, a low pH, um, that means like it's finished digesting um, and it's ready for you to drink, but it's also starter tea to get the next batch going. And it's gonna have a nice low pH and that acid will help protect the kombucha from any molds or problems like that. So could you just buy a kombucha then and use that? Yeah. Okay. As long as it's like raw, unpasteurized, and doesn't have any fruit or flavors or anything added. Ah, okay. So to make one liter of kombucha, we're gonna weigh um, 25 grams of tea. So I'm gonna use a little bit of oolong and a little bit of black tea. And then we're gonna put in 50 grams of organic raw sugar. On this huge sack. Yeah. <laughs> Make a lot of kombucha. So that's gonna be 50 grams. There we go. And then we're gonna add 500 milliliters of boiling water. Okay. And that's gonna be our tea. Okay. Cool. 
And then we give that a good stir to make sure that all the sugar is dissolved and the tea is getting brewed. <laughs> and then should I strain it? Okay, so you're probably going to want to make sure that like um, all of the goodness is out of the tea leaves. Oh, okay. So give them like a little squish. Like that. And Ooh. so now what you have here is about a litre of tea and sugar and it's nice and cold. So we put that into a glass jar. Okay, so we've got a nice clean glass jar with our fresh sugar tea mix. And now we're gonna add our starter tea. So we've just made a liter of fresh tea. And in here, I think we have about half a liter of starter tea, um, which is enough to make it nice and acidic and get our next batch of kombucha going and here goes the scoby there we go and then the last thing that we need to do is secure the top of the jar with some material and an elastic band which will help keep dust and insects and any other little bits out um, and then just store that away from direct sunlight in a not too drafty okay. spot, um, not too close to any walls where there might be damp. Um, generally if you, you would be comfortable sitting there for three weeks then your kombucha will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and then yeah it's just about three weeks until that'll be ready and you'll probably see the colour should lighten a bit and go like a bit golden. Okay. So the colour will go like a nice golden colour. Um, obviously right now where it's just fresh, it pretty much just smells like tea. Yeah. And then in about three weeks when it's finished, it'll smell like kind of sour. Yeah, it's like acidic or something. Mm -hmm. Like vinegar almost. Yep. And also kind of tasty. After three weeks, you're going to have your finished kombucha here um, and we're going to add some fruit to it and this is called the second ferment. So um, you've poured your scoby and your starter tea into your next jar and you're going to leave that going somewhere for another three weeks. Okay, so that's like your next round. So you took, yeah. you, this jar was filled mm -hmm. and then that had a scoby in it. Mm -hmm and then you separate part of it, right? Yep. And then you So you pour off your starter tea, which okay. is your brewed kombucha, which is gonna be always about a quarter or a third of your batch of kombucha. So um, if you wanted to make five liters, you'd need about 500, 800 milliliters of starter tea. Uh, okay, <laughs> got it. <laughs> and then, so you've poured off your starter tea and your scoby into your next jar and that's gone off to sit on a shelf for three weeks and now we're going to do the second ferment which is with some fruit okay. and today we've got some cherries. Beautiful. Um, I use, personally, I use frozen fruit if I'm oh. going to use fruit because um, I think that they pick frozen fruit at the height of the season like when it's plentiful yeah. um, and then it normally gets flash frozen like really fast if you got, can still buy like organic and really good quality um, so it's normally the tastiest as opposed to trying to buy cherries at the wrong time of year fair enough um, and also because of the freezing process you're not going to have moldy ones or insects or like anything bad uh. in the fruit um, I did originally begin I started brewing with fresh fruit yeah um, and you know, you've always got like one strawberry in, in the pack, which has gone bad. And then you don't know where that malt has gone into the other fruit. 
and then if you're going to put it in your kombucha and then it's going to sit in your kombucha for a few days like i don't know it's it's bad a little risky yeah yeah so i use frozen fruit fair That's and how much do you put in um you can play with that it's how much you want it to taste oh um you can also just add juice yeah i add whole fruit and then strain it out again um, so it's more like an essence of it. Um, but I would say approximately um, 200 grams a litre, depending on what it is that you're adding. Boop. <laughs> Could you leave it in there? I think if you if you were doing it just for yourself, yeah, it goes a bit funny because I think the acid like sucks out all of the color and the flavor and stuff. Um. Um, but yeah, you could definitely leave it in there. So then this is the second fermentation. So no scoby okay. and flavor, fruit or cinnamon, vanilla pods, whatever you like. And then this is also without oxygen. So your first fermentation with the SCOBY, you just covered it with material, so yeah. the SCOBY could have oxygen. And then this is the second fermentation, and this is with a nice sealed airtight lid. And then, then you bottle it now, mm -hmm. after this? Okay. Yep. So I would leave it like this for two days, depending on what it is. Yeah. Um, so that you can get the most flavor into your kombucha. And then maybe... Um, give it like a good squeeze with your hands to make sure you're getting all the juice out of the fruit and then strain it out and then you can put it into bottles. Cool. The sure. cherries are so pretty in there. Mm-hmm. Look at this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you want me to do the straining and bottling? What do you think, Lou? You know. I think okay. so, yeah. Is it possible? Yeah, of course. Anything's possible. <laughs> so now we've had our fruit in the kombucha for um, about 48 hours. And all the cherry flavor has come out. And now we're ready to bottle it. So again, we're just going to pour it through. Very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> My lovely assistant. <laughs> And then we're going to bottle it in one of these airtight flippy top bottles. so bubbly yeah and then you want to leave like a smallish gap at the top of the bottle but not too much because you want the pressure to build up a bit uh, okay. and then there we go and that's your cherry kombucha second fermentation leave this out at room temperature for two to three days but I would check it if after the, the second day check it like open it yeah um, because depending on what you've used like cherries not too bad pineapple or beetroot or something with a lot of sugar it's gonna get really really fizzy uh -huh. but cherries will still get a bit fizzy so you want to be checking it so it doesn't because they can't explode yeah they can definitely explode <laughs> I think that's technical term for this is called burping, yes. right? Yes, yep, exactly. So you let out a little air so it doesn't explode. Yeah. Cool. Kombucha! <laughs>